Hello friends, this video on continuity and differentiability part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 12. Now that we have learned to determine whether a function is continuous or not at a particular point or whether the whole function is continuous at all the points in the domain and with that we were able to tell whether the function is differentiable or not. That is, if the function is continuous at a particular point then we say that the function is differentiable at that particular point. Now what is the value of the function when you differentiate at point C? So let's say we have a function, a real function and C is a point in its domain and now we have to find the derivative of f f point at point C. That is derivative of f at point C will be nothing but f of C plus h minus f of C by h. Please remember this formula. The derivative of f at C is f of C plus h minus f of C by h provided the limit exists obviously the limit should exist and also the, the derivative is denoted by f dash c or dy by dx or fx both are same so this is nothing but I'll say f dash c is nothing but this so the way we denote is by f dash c or dy by dx or if I have y is equal to fx kind of thing I can also say y dash as nothing but f dash of x so I can or I can say dy by dx is nothing but f dash of x. So f x is my function, then the derivative of f x is nothing but f dash x or dy by dx or y dash. Correct. So thus if you combine these two, they are same actually. Then I come to the statement that f dash x is nothing but f of x plus h minus f of x by h where h tends to 0 provided the limit exists. So if my y is equal to fx is my equation then dy by dx or y dash is equal to f dash x. All are same as I told. This is just a way to represent but the actual value is this guy. This is the value f of x plus h minus f of x by h but the way to represent you can represent by f dash x you can represent by y dash or dy by dx. All three mean same. This is nothing but way to represent. Correct? And all these will be equal to this guy. This is the value f of x plus h minus f of x by h. A function is differentiable at a point c if it is continuous at point c. This is something which we have told so many times that a function is differentiable at a point c in the domain if if it is continuous at that point c. Similarly, a function is differentiable at all the points in this interval a comma b if if it is differentiable at all the point in this a comma b if it is continuous at all points. That is, it's a continuous function. That is, it is, if it is continuous at all the points, then it is differentiable at all the points. So, the, the logic here is differentiable implies continuous. So, whether we are talking about the point or we are talking about all points, one point or we're talking all points and the reverse is also true if it is continuous it is differentiable if it is differentiable it is continuous so both are true so the theorem is if a function is differentiable at point c it is continuous at that point the same thing which we discussed and the corollary is also true every differentiable function is continuous so as i told differentiable and continuous both goes hand in hand We'll take one example where we have to prove or find whether the function is differentiable or not. So we are told that uh, the question says we have to prove that the greatest integer function uh, denoted by fx is equal to greatest integer of x where x is between 0 and 3 
is not differentiable. So I told for differentiable, the function has to be continuous. So if the function is continuous, it is differentiable. It is not continuous, it is not differentiable. So here what we can do, we can just find where the function is continuous at these points or not. If it is not continuous, that means it is not differentiable. So to find whether it is continuous, we have this uh, equation, I think limit of fx, where x tends to c is equal to fc. If this is true for c is equal to 1, then I can say that my function is continuous at c is equal to 1. And same thing for c is equal to 2. So let's take c is equal to 1 now. So if you can prove that it is uh, the limit of fx extends to 1 is equal to f1, then my function is continuous. So first to prove whether it's first to prove whether the limit exists or not, we have to find the left hand limit and right hand limit at x is equal to 1. So let's do this left hand limit. So left hand limit is nothing but limit x tends to 1 minus f of x. That is a number just less than 1. So I can take a number 0 0.99999. This number is just less than 1. So if you find the uh, value of this, this becomes greatest integer function of 0 0.9999. And this is nothing but 0. Correct. Now let me take the right hand limit. Right hand limit at x is equal to 1. This is nothing but limit of x tends to 1 plus f of x. So I can take a value that is just greater than 1. 1. 1.00001. This number is just greater than 1. So if you take the greatest integer function of this guy, this is nothing but 1. So if you see both the values are not same. So left hand limit is not equal to right hand limit. Thus limit does not exist. If limit does not exist, I can't use this formula because this itself is not existing. So I can say that my function is not continuous at x is equal to 1. Since it is not continuous, I can say that function is not differentiable. Correct? At x is equal to 1. Theorem which we have seen, if it is not continuous at x equal to 1, it won't be differentiable at x equal to 1. And thus we have proved that it is not differentiable at x is equal to 1. Similarly, we can do for x is equal to 2. Same thing you can try. Exactly same thing. So we have learned this formula that if you want to find derivative of this number, it is nothing but f dash x is nothing but f of x plus h minus f of x by h where no limit h tends to 0. Correct? This is my formula. But it is difficult a lot of time to evaluate this. So what we have done is we have some ready-made formulas. And with that ready-made formulas, we generally try to solve equation because in real world what happens is if you for every function, if you use this approach, this, this kind of approach we have followed in class 11 where we used to find derivative in this kind of approach. We used to find f of x plus h, subtract f of x from that and divide by h. And then you used to get this equation and solve it. But this kind of approach is very cumbersome. If you get a very complex equation, then solving such questions is difficult. So what we have done, we have some ready-made formulas and that we use commonly. Please remember these formulas. I'll give you proof for all these, but just remember these formulas. If fx is equal to x to the power n, x to the power n, then f dash x will be nothing but n x to the power n minus 1. Correct? For example, my fx is equal to, let's suppose, x to the power 8. So this becomes 8 into x to the power 8 minus 1. That is 
8 x to the power 7. So please remember this is a very critical formula. If my fx is equal to x to the power n, my f does x is nothing but n x to the power n minus 1. Similarly, if my fx is equal to sin x, this becomes cos x. If fx is equal to cos x, f does x becomes minus sin x. Please note it's minus sin x. Similarly, if my fx is equal to tan x, my f dash x become 6 square x. Please note, for fx is equal to x to the power n, f dash x is n x to the power n minus 1. For fx is equal to sin x, f dash x is equal to cos x. For fx is equal to cos x, f dash is equal to minus sin x. And for fx is equal to tan x, f dash x is equal to 6 square x. Now let's derive all these because uh, we should because I'm telling you that this is how it is but how will you trust me I should prove this for you right because if I don't prove it doesn't make sense to just follow what someone is telling you should ask for the proof why if fx is equal to x to the power n f does x has to be x to the power n into x to the power n minus 1 so let's try to prove all these formulas thank you visit examfear.com to Watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.